Okay, we'll we'll get started. Um, first things first, I'm going to hand you over to Phil Hill, Chairman of the County FA, to open the session up for us all. Oh, good evening, everybody. Uh, firstly, can I thank you all for your for your commitment? Today is a a landmark, really, in relation to grassroots football coming back. I'm, I'm sure we're all excited about that. And new referees are an essential agreed, uh, ingredient of that coming back and football restarting. So a big thank you for your for your commitment tonight. Um, and a big thank you to Sam because Sam's put together a, a fantastic development week. So if some of you haven't um, logged on or, or said that you're going to attend, this is a really good week uh, for you to, to learn. I always think learning, if you even take one small piece away from it, it's something you know worth doing. So please, please do that, uh, and please get involved. Big thank you to James, who who I know through uh, their association of bringing some referees over from Norway. He facilitated an excellent breakfast at a uh, at a hotel in Histon, which uh, I attended on behalf of the association. So thanks, James, and I'm sure it's going to be a great session. Please enjoy it, and thank you for your time and commitment to the County FA, particularly now in the restart of football. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Phil. Uh, yeah, just to echo those words, big thank you to James for, for joining us tonight and kickstarting what will hopefully be um, a week full of, of learning and engagement. The, the numbers that have signed up for the sessions are phenomenal, um, and it's great to see loads of you on these sessions. Um, big also uh, a big welcome to uh, we've got some individuals who are signing up for the upcoming referee courses that haven't started the courses yet, um, but are showing a fantastic uh, enthusiasm and, and, and interest in refereeing before they've even started. So um, if, if you are one of those individuals, welcome. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the session. and You'll see what is available to you uh, moreover when when you qualify, hopefully in the coming months. James, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to you um, and let you get started. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, again, thank you um, for the invitation, Sam and uh, and Phil. Uh, always a good brekkie when I'm around my friends, so uh, I was built up on them. So not a problem at all. I um, just want to do a very quick intro and then I'm going to get the slides up. So um, a great week for everyone in Cambridgeshire. Really delighted to get the invitation to come here. Um, I think Sam did email me once saying he wants the biggest names in coaching, but he forgot the word names. And so you got the biggest in coaching. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun this evening. This is not about me talking. Uh, this is a lot of interaction. So we're going to have some breakout rooms and uh, really delighted that Chris Abbott has taken time out uh, this evening. If you don't know Chris, it's not worth knowing. And also my boss, uh, in terms of FA Corps, which is the uh, national development programme uh, across England, uh, Chris Knoll was really delighted that Chris is as well. He's not watching me. He's uh, he's, a, he's a sickler for learning, developing even the 20 odd years and, and, and the levels of football that he associated himself with. And uh, certainly very grateful. I know Sam and KGFA are very grateful that he's here as well. So thank you to you all. So let's share my screen and hope this works. <clears throat> OK, so if someone could just give me a quick yes that that's come through. Yes. Bro breaking all online learning etiquette with that question so i thought what do i talk to you guys about and actually something that's really um instilled to me as an fa core coach uh, so i look after uh, six referees uh from level six uh, to level four are we ready for this restart so today is the day that football is legal again um in in the country at, at various levels and for me, the biggest thing that I'm working with my guys and 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 um, and we have on FA Core is making sure that our referees are they ready? What have they been doing? So why is this subject really important to us? So first of all, unless you've been in a coma for over a year, we've had a lockdown, we've had COVID, we've had probably the biggest biggest event 
in our lives, um, let alone um, within um, uh, football. But within football, this has probably been the biggest amount of disruption probably since the Second, Second World War, um, where we've really had to learn a new way of living, a new way of dealing with things. The biggest thing that's sticking in my head as well is suddenly we've got no pre-season. This is not like we're starting a season where you get a month and you can build yourself up, get some games, get some practice in. Um, some of you have probably got games this weekend. So, again, with that immediate start, without the opportunity of burning some rust or getting our minds switched on again as, as referees, we're, we're in there for the immediate start. And also, we've got to think about what kind of football is coming back, what kind of environment are we coming back into. Um, but the good news is, and we've all been waiting for it, we are back. And we, as a football community, as a refereeing community, as developers, uh, and Cambridgeshire FA need to make sure that you are ready. You are ready to uh, jump in and uh, deliver the job that we know you're very, very capable of. Um, I don't know if anyone saw the slide that was going around as we were waiting to kick off, just in terms of etiquette. If anyone's got a question, please leave it for the end. Uh, we're going to have a lot of discussions anyway. Um, and then you've got the, the formal way of raising your hand, etc. I'm sure everyone knows how to use Zoom and Teams by now as well. So let's just move on, if my slide allows me to. OK, so this evening is a real simple question. There's going to be a lot of self-reflection here is, are you ready? So I'm really delighted Phil Hill's here with us tonight, because as you can see, there's a photo from his first ever Football League game. Um, but in all honesty, let, let's, uh, let's be quite serious, because we do need to switch on, just like you're going to need to switch on on your first game. So are you ready? So what I'm going to do this evening is we're going to look at a series of thoughts that we need to look at to make sure that we are ready. So there was a little bit of homework, so hopefully you've already got some thoughts. So we're going to go straight into some breakout rooms. And the first question I need you to think about um, and in your groups is what elements are we needing to consider as a match official for the restart? And then we need to start looking into a second question now about what has lockdown changed that could impact our games when we get back into uh, refereeing in the very, very near future. So in your breakout groups, there's going to be um, allocations from Sam and Sam will quickly go through how that's going to work in a second. But can I just ask that you nominate a, a spokesperson uh, for each group? Um, and so we could just get feedback and then hopefully we can get everyone to bring some thoughts back together. So if we could have 10 minutes on this, uh, please. And Sam, over to you just to uh, sort out the breakout rooms. Perfect. So the breakout rooms have been automatically assigned in a minute. I'll click a button and you should, if all goes well, um, move into those breakout rooms so there's one lead person to facilitate in each group they will make themselves known at the start um, and we'll go from there we've got four groups um 10 minutes and just open your discussions and fire the rooms back in afterwards hopefully this works otherwise i'm going to use chris's excuse of microsoft crashing for the evening <laughs> There should be four of you left in here in a moment. You four will work together as a four as well. The rooms are just opening. Here we go. I can see people moving. Perfect. So we should have in here Ollie, Josh, Andy and John. Got one more group moving in. and Sophie as well. Perfect. I shall leave you five together. Uh, Andy, can I ask you to facilitate in this group, please? If you've got a microphone. Yes, just unmuted. Perfect. Fantastic. So uh, I'll leave you guys to it. Far away. <laughs> Is everyone in the room? 
Well, uh, there should all be everyone in there, yeah, now. Yep. Can everyone hear? Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Right. Who can hear? Hello. I can hear you. Okay. Is everyone else on mute? Would you like to take yourself off mute? Anyone else want to contribute? <laughs> Apart from John, does everyone else want to take themselves off of mute? Should I be on mute? Oh, everyone else is on mute. Jack's now off mute by the look of it. David, Sophie, Claire, you're both on, you're all on mute. To contribute, can we take each other off? Can you all take each other off, take yourselves off of mute so I can hear what you're saying and what you'd like to consider? Thanks, Sophie. Anyone out? Uh, I'm just going in the kitchen. I, I admit, I, did, I didn't know there were going to be breakout rooms. I've had to move as well. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, well, anyone like to put any thoughts in about what we need to be to be ready for the weekend? We need to be fit. Okay, so what have we, has anyone been doing anything out of the ordinary to sort of maintain fitness over lockdown? Right, I'm going to jump in. Andy, thank you. It's James. Right. OK, so guys, um, let's get some conversation going. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a, a bit of a bit of a tough gig. So um, what, what's different? What has changed? I, I would say the attitude of the players could have changed because they've okay, been out. Good. They've been um, missing football. Now, it can work two ways in that you could have a very positive approach or you could have a lot of frustration that they're looking to get out of their systems when they set foot on their pitch. Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. OK, so what, what else is going on? What, what we what factors do we need to think about as referees that perhaps we haven't had to think about before? I think they'll have missed football for the last three months and they'll make mistakes just as well as we will. So we've just got to be prepared for their and to be as frustrated as us when we're when we start refereeing. Mm. Mm. So Dave hasn't got a mic, so I can see in the chat he's put about um um getting fitter so he's been increasing his running lately which is great uh but one risk is about play player fitness so slow reactions mistiming tackles etc um is certainly a real risk that we need to consider so what else could we be looking at there's going to be possibly a wide variation in the skill levels and there's a lot there could well be players dropping down levels because they haven't got games and therefore there'll be a big difference between the skill levels of certain players which will reflect itself in tackles and things like that do you know what i never ever thought about that andy so that's a really good point and um, yeah you're right because obviously supply leagues and uh, and, yeah. and higher competitions are all being suspended so you could get a lot of players coming in and they may get frustrated in the game. Um, they, they may get frustrated themselves that they've dropped a standard and 
suddenly they become a risk to you to manage as well. Um, and you might be managing people that you're not used to managing. And, and, and it's things when, like tackles where yeah. a player of a lesser, lesser ability it just went for the ball, but the other player was just too good and too quick for him. You see it often on a yeah. Sunday in men's games, yeah. and that's yeah. you have to consider that on Sundays more than on a Saturdays. But I think it will come more and more prevalent in the Saturday games as well going forward at the moment. Like Monty Python film, isn't it? Thou yeah. shalt not pass. <laughs> so I'm going to have you. Okay, fantastic. Um, right, okay, who's quiet? I do pick on people. Uh, who else we've got? Sophie. I haven't heard from Sophie yet. Yeah, I think overall the fitness levels of people will be a bit of an issue because, you know, yeah, some people have been out um, exercising a lot more, whereas other people have just, you know, not. Mm. So there's, there's, there's like an inconsistency, isn't there, um, potentially as well. So you could get a lot of injuries, you could get people cramping up and uh, subs and... Like you say, some people will be absolutely on the button straight away. Some people will be going, I've got a years of rust to get out of my first game. So, good stuff. Uh, who else? Will. Will, you want? Okay. And Nick. Oh, Will, Will's mic's not working. Will, chuck some comments in the chat, mate, and then we can have a discussion about them. Thank you. Nick is on as well. I think. No, no, he's dropped off. So this is going very well. I'm very pleased. Yeah. <laughs> right, OK. What about us, though? What about us? So we talked about players. We talked about kind of like fitness, and I think fitness is a very obvious one. Uh, what about us as referees? What do we need to consider to make sure that we are ready? It's I think we need to know the protocol, what we need to do when we get to the ground, because that, that hasn't been communicated yet. So I'm presuming that's going to come out in the next week when the fixtures come out, because it was like turn up half an hour before the game last time. So I'm presuming it's something very similar. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you might have games that might be like double headers. You might have games kicking off at completely different times because trying to cram all these fixtures into into a, a very small pool of, of pitches potentially. Um, so Dave's just written a note about reviewing the COVID guidance. Yeah, very important. Um, you know, certainly with the beginning of the last season, back in September, there was a whole lot of guidance about who's not allowed in changing rooms. Will changing facilities be open yet? Will um, will there be shower facilities? How how do we know uh, what to do on a on a on a match day, um, etc.? So, good point there, Dave. And you've also said about players acting as club officials; uh, they might be less keen. Due to lack of playing, uh, yeah, you, you might have people running the line because they've turned up and uh, somebody else has, um, has has come in. So you know, there's some real real good things there to really think about and what impact they're going to have with you um, on match day. So we've just got one last minute, and then we're going to go back into the main room. So is there any other thoughts anybody else has got that we perhaps haven't talked about? Just reviewing the laws of the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because we haven't we haven't looked at them for three, four months. Yeah, some players haven't looked at them since day. No, they don't. They don't know them anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, absolutely. You know, laws. Uh, we had some law changes last year. Did we get enough time to practice them and and get ahead of ourselves? Perhaps not. Uh, so yeah. Okay, good. I think everyone's coming back in. Who's the spokesperson for this group, Andy? Oh, I, I assume it's me then. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the orchestrator at the beginning, so that sounds good to me.
Okay, Sam, just let me know when everyone's back in. That would be great. Yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on the last group that is closing. Um, just like to point out to uh, Mr. Chris Abbott, that is how you use the breakout room function. I can tell and you I miss your office <laughs> And um, we're back, James. Everyone's here. Lovely. OK, good stuff. OK, so that 10 minutes utterly flew by. So what we were looking at was what elements uh, do we need to consider um, as a match official with a restart? And also what has lockdown changed that can impact our games? So uh, I'm going to kick off with Andy just to pick on him because I was just in a room with him. So, Andy, what elements are there for us to consider? There's going to be protocols surrounding COVID. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be possibly a wider range of the skill levels within teams with possible players dropping down levels because they're keen to have a game. And we'll need to consider that um, when managing the game. There will be fitness levels of players are going to vary quite considerably, which will impact on the game. There will be, um, I can't remember what else we said. OK, well, that's a good start. We'll, we'll fill it in with other groups as well. Um, I just want to pick up on what you said about um, players dropping down levels, because I'll be brutally honest, when I prepared this, I, I never actually had that consideration because there's going to be players that perhaps play at much higher levels um, that are really keen to get just have a kick about with their mates and want to go out and play football. So that, that can be a risk to us because if you've got a player that isn't used to that level, um, you know, what are their discipline levels going to be like? What their tackling is going to be like? What's their skill level going to be like? Are they going to have... Um, the 42 year old um, six foot wide six foot high center back going you're not getting past me uh, you're too good and that creates a problem for you um, are there going to be people that are better at playing the referee rather than playing the game as well so it's all factors we need to to consider so that was a really good point that was brought up there so thank you okay uh Let's move on to another spokesperson, if they can uh, present themselves. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll do my group. Mate. Oh, that's something else. Um, so we got quite a few things. We got safety as well due to like COVID and stuff. Yeah. And we also said about injuries, about how some people may not have been keeping up with fitness during lockdown, so they might be as less fit as before. But um, we also put like moving away from the game and more going towards the referee. We said getting back into that routine of the normal stuff you do at the weekend, like yeah. what time you'd be having breakfast, when you're getting the kick done. Uh, and we also said that the referees might have to recap on laws of the game because obviously we've been away for so long. Those newer referees might not remember certain laws. They might have to, you know, recap and to make sure that they're ready to be as efficient as they can as they were last time. Yeah, absolutely. A really good list there. So, um, said about injuries, I think the biggest pandemic that's going to hit Cambridge year after COVID is probably going to be cramp. Uh, so, whether that's you or actually the players, so that's a really good one to consider. You said about laws of the game. Um, so, in, in Andy's group that we were just discussing with just then, um, somebody mentioned about laws of the game. I think it was John. Uh, really, really good point about that because there were law changes last summer and to be fair did we really get a good clear run at, at exercising new law so really good to look at law of the game um absolute sad sad -o moment here but when i was an active referee um i would always have a pre-match bath a good old soak in the old radox and i would watch youtube on my phone of red card offenses and it, it sounds really sad but it got my mind thinking and identifying offences and stuff and, and and actually little things like that um there's so much for you guys to uh, access these days so not just the laws of the game but let's look at match incidents there's still stuff going on uh, on the football league the premier league uh, national league and also abroad there's so much access to footage 
whether it's on social media, whether it's on YouTube, but then don't forget the FA. I've got the FA community uh, and and the um, the support functions through that as well. So that's a really good one. It's making sure that we actually remember what the laws of the game are. So good stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to another group. Do you mean to go, uh, mate? Yeah, go on, Abo. I think we've got a lot of the same stuff. I think one thing we we sort of discussed was like sort of like obviously it was about physical fitness but your mental fitness getting back into that process and the information giving the decision you know we haven't done that much in the last few months so that was really really important um probably uh, one thing that would come out is game management because we felt that with repeated subs and maybe players not have played for so long there may be more repeated substitutes in the game hmm. so yeah uh, absolutely pattern of fitness and tired is sort of come into it the players expectations you know you've got to manage them because they're probably going to think, oh, we haven't played for a month. They'll be let off that reckless challenge. But you've got to show empathy for that, but still, but still do your job, as far as the challenge is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot, obviously, same preparation before with no changing rooms, etc. Obviously, as well as the laws of the game, know the rules of the competition, because obviously some of these are specially made competitions before the end of the season. Um, some 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 leagues are playing double headers, so so just make sure you know what the rules of the competition are before you start. And then I think we've got much, much everyone else, COVID uh, COVID requirements, sort of the preparation, the laws, the fitness kind of side of the the, the role. Yeah, really good one there. Uh, a couple of good things about game management. Um, we About having empathy, but also we're there to do a job. So let's face it, people are going to be slightly out of shape. And like I said, there's been no pre-season. So you're going to get people that are going to get frustrated that they might be as not, not be as sharp as they were. And what risk does that then bring to us as a referee? Well, in game management, we might get a little bit more dissent. Do we look at, well, they're frustrated, but actually let's look at the challenges. Well, that's still a reckless challenge. That's still excessive force. That, my friend, is still violent conduct. And I need to do my job and uh, an action accordingly. So, again, game management, I think we just, I think it's that awareness, just being even more aware and trying to be ahead of the referee, um, sorry, ahead of the players and also the clubs to be there to manage the game in the same expectations as they always do. But we still need to be aware of the other factors that come in. The other thing I just want to pick up on, uh, Abbo, really please, and knowing it's your full-time job, uh, competition rules, um, certainly, you know, let's let's think about what it is that the competitions are doing. Uh, Like Abbo said, some of them have gone straight into a cup uh, knockout uh, competition. Some are just doing uh, double headers. Some, some, uh, I've seen one league that there's no draws, uh, so they're going straight to penalty shootout. So, again, part of your preparation and making sure you are ready is to make sure that you know what is expected from the competition. And, again, piggybacking on what you said about the COVID guidelines within COVID support, uh, safety as well. Just uh, backing on that, James, I want to say it, but we will be sending out a one-pager for all the competitions and what they're doing. Brilliant. The referees, so they do know what's going to happen. I'm just writing that as we speak. So that'll be out in the next couple of days to all the referees. Okay, I'm glad you're paying attention to the presentation instead of doing your work. Um, lovely. That's good. Thanks, mate. Um, let's move on to the uh, to to another group. Slim, it's Nolsey. Hello, mate. We've got an extensive list that's pretty much been covered, and it's great to hear everything that has been mentioned. Um, it seems a trivial one, but I really wouldn't be waking up on Saturday morning going, "Where's my socks? Where's my shorts? Where are my boots?" Um, kit is quite important. If you like yeah. me and put a few pounds on over the lockdown and stuff, does it actually fit? Do you know where it is? Is it clean? Is it ready to go to make that professional sharp appearance when you turn up at the ground? So, um, yeah, just one that we covered. But, yeah, we had, uh, we had all the others covered as well, mate. So, really good lists. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, Kit, um, you know, it's, um, you're absolutely right. Does it fit? Where is it? Uh, have you had a spring clean as mum dad been sorting out the garage or the loft and uh, and everything over over lockdown because they're struggling to find things to do um but yeah have we got everything in place and let's look now let's not look saturday morning um 
also just on the basis of that about your your, your pre-match prep is don't um so abo was saying about uh, sending out information about competitions don't assume that your game's going to be three o'clock on a saturday because um abo i don't know if uh, you can fill us in on here but i would imagine there's a lot of football to cram in um where kickoff times might be slightly varied obviously because of covid guidelines but also there's only so many uh pitches and facilities available at the moment as well so are we making sure that we've actually got our confirmations uh have we got the clear idea a where we're going and b what time we need to be there etc abo anything on that uh buddy so i lost you there for a second oh you're right on your list um no i was just yeah. saying um I would imagine there's a there's a lot of football to be crammed in, perhaps a bit of a limited choice of facilities and stuff. Games may be um, um, due to a variation of kickoff times, locations against the norm. Uh, yeah, there will be. I think I think what you'll find not so much in the adult game because I think most of them are playing the cup, but it's particularly in the youth game, you'll find that there'll be a lot of double header games. So, for example, at under four, under fifteen. Where they normally play one 70 minute game, they'll play two 50 minute games at the same venue to play two games. So that is going to be a lot of that in quite a bit of that in youth football. Um, but the adult game, there will be some change of venues, definitely. So just be wary of those because of obviously cricket. Um, but we will try and highlight them when we send the appointments out. And what I'll try and do, if there is a, a change of venue to a normal venue, when I send the appointments out, I'll try and highlight that so you can see that. But please just double check because there will be quite a few of them. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Abo. Good to have the, the inside knowledge on this as well. Um, were there any further groups that haven't fed back yet? James, Richard Nichols. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you? Um, obviously on the list, we'll tick everything off. But one interesting point, um, one of our colleagues raised the question of um, referees' personal form. And what we mean by that is players obviously are, are really, you know, really playing well and, and in good form. Well, uh, is a referee, uh, has he got the confidence with this continual breaks through COVID? Um, and how, how possibly would we deal with that? Um, and my, my two penneth in there was basically looking, possibly looking at the being your first game of the season. You've done all your, your preparation. Um, you may have done one or two friendlies, but there's nothing like the real thing, the first league match. And I think with any referee, whether you're well established or new, once you get on there and you've done your pre-match readiness, as soon as you blow that whistle, give your first decision, I think you're, you, you then really start to settle down and enjoy the game. But that was a, a really good point. So just how are you feeling in terms of your own confidence and personal form at the time of the game. Rich, absolutely fantastic. And uh, as always, uh, great great to hear your feedback on that and some really good points there. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I'm saying, are you ready? I, I generally mean that. Are you ready? Um, because lockdown's affected us all massively, somewhere along the lines. Um, and to some, football is a great um, respite out of, what 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 has become a normal kind of world for us and for a lot of us this is probably the first sense of normality so some of you might have been stuck at home for a year working uh with family around etc you might be studying uh, and you've got the pressures of your exams and stuff and 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 as always our trusted friend uh, richard was saying um actually what what kind of form are we are, are we going to have and um and yeah a fantastic point there um and we will dig on to that a little bit further in the presentation um were there any further groups i've got a feeling we may have touched on all the groups silence is golden right okay. yeah so let's move on then so when i was pulling all this together and i'm thinking as a coach and also as a referee what am I going to look at to make sure that I'm ready? What am I going to look at to make sure that my coaches are ready? But also what I want you all as match officials or those coming into refereeing uh, for the first time, what do you need to think about to make sure you're ready? And I broke them down into four kind of groups. The first one's physical. 
So straight away, everyone was talking about fitness, you know, uh, and, and I saw a couple of our colleagues have been out running a little bit more and trying to get physically in shape. And that's fantastic. We'll look at that a little bit further. But also our mental um, ability to be ready to be back in the game. So this very much touches on what Richie was just saying um, in terms of um, how we are in ourselves and our form. And it's certainly a subject that's very close to my heart. I'm also going to look at the practical side of things. So Nolsey kicked off with uh, about our kit and, uh, and Abbo uh, touched in there with um, the competition rules and and also uh, one of our colleagues said about the laws of the game. So let's look at the practical aspects to make sure that we are ready as well. And then finally, us as a person. So some of the personal aspects that we need to look at that we can control and we can influence. So just going to go through the physical aspects uh, before we move into our next uh, little activity here. So in terms of physical, we covered off quite a few of these as we went along. Fitness is the obvious one. So um, as you notice, there's not a lot on Netflix anymore. And the weather, particularly today, is getting much nicer. So are we going out? Are we going up the park and out, putting down a couple of cones and doing some sessions? I'm sure if you want some uh, sessions to go away on, um, contact one of your referee developers. Sam, I'm sure, will have. Um, some really good fitness drills available uh, to you uh, from Cambridge UFA. If you don't ask, you don't get. Um, have a look online, loads of great things. It's not just about uh, going for a jog uh, for a mile. Um, you know, how sharp are you on your fitness, um, on your sprints? Uh, how flexible are you in terms of are your muscles ready? Are, are you going to be that one that gets cramp in the first five minutes? So fitness is really, really important and to make sure you are ready. So the question I'm going to ask you, and absolutely don't want anyone to put their hands up here because we're not here to make anyone look silly, but are you doing what you can physically? Or have you actually taken it a bit easy for the last year? Um, as Chris said, some of us, unfortunately, have put on a couple of pounds. It's going to happen. But are we actually doing what we can now, knowing that we're coming into our, uh, our restart and our games? Are we ready physically? So how do we know we are match fit? Because we don't have a pre-season. We're going to go straight into our first games. So you all know your fitness levels. You all know what you're capable of. So if you go out for a run and you bang out a 5K in 35 minutes, fantastic. And you feel good. You know that's, that's kind of where you are at that level. Um, you know where you are on a hit session. You know... If you're like me doing Joe Wicks, annoying voice, but actually bloody good at what he does. Um, so where are we on our fitness? And it's about being truthful to yourself, not being, oh, that will do. But we need to be match fit and you need to be adjudicating that yourself. Are we eating correctly? Um, again, <laughs> Just Eat, Deliveroo, they're great companies to put shares in at the moment. But are we actually eating correctly? Are we thinking about, well, I've got this game at the weekend. Am I going to have some pasta before? What was my pre-match meal? Are we actually looking us out of ourselves? Are we actually eating because we need that to fuel ourselves for our games? Or are we eating because, well, Netflix is on, so I've got this mag massive bag of popcorn or, or whatever. So, again, let's think about are we putting into our body to get out of our body what we need and what everybody expects from us during a game? So what are the clubs doing? So from today, the clubs are actually able to do training sessions. So my question to you is, what are you doing? What are you doing to make sure you're physically ready? Um, so some clubs have been doing Zoom, uh, like hit sessions, all sorts of things. So again, let's just have a private reflection. What are we doing? Is it enough? Let's be honest with ourselves. Is it enough? So that's the physical. On to the mental then. So like I said, the mental preparation is really, really key. And again, echoing Richard's point earlier, and it's about that mental sharpness. So like I said, I've, I've just shared with you one thing I, I used to enjoy doing is reviewing uh, video footage of red cards from the week on YouTube and all sorts of stuff. Just kind of got me in the zone of going, actually, this is where I need to recognise an offence. 
or actually for that to happen, why did it happen? Well, there was a poor touch by the player. Did I react? Where would I be? That kind of thing. And it gets you in the mood and everyone's got different ways of making sure you've got that, that mental sharpness. Um, and there's loads of different things you could be doing uh, just to try and get your, your agility and your mental uh, well-being uh, on par in terms of being ready. It is about our mindset. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I've struggled during lockdown. Um, it's been very challenging. It's been very difficult. Um, I have missed football. I've missed my friends in football. I've missed the ability to sit in the stand and take in a game of football. I've missed the opportunity of doing face-to-face -face, um, coaching with my coaches and adding value to people's refereeing careers. But my mindset right now is, do you know what? I'm really looking forward to it. Can't wait to get back out there. So if you are someone that has been affected, how are we now getting ourselves into a stronger mindset to make sure we are ready? And what's our take on the game? So are we actually over eager or are we subdued? So some people have massively missed football. Some people have gone, do you know what? My life's changed and life has changed and we need to acknowledge that. But if you're over eager and you go into a game, you know, flying out the blocks, oh, I've missed this and here's a yellow, you can have that. Or are we actually so subdued that we're not ready when there's that big decision and we've lost that confidence, we've lost that edge to deliver? So on that spectrum, we need to be quite balanced. So if you are really, really looking forward to it and you're going to be like a kid on Christmas morning, fair play to you, but let's bring that back down into the middle a little bit. And if we are subdued and we're a little bit nervous and not confident, let's think about how we could get you back in, into the middle of going, right, I've got a balanced mindset and I'm ready, I am prepared. And are we ready for our big decisions? So going to be penalties there's going to be uh, red cards there's going to be yellow cards there's going to be all sorts of things that we need to take in but we've got to be one step ahead and we're going to be ready for these big decisions are we ready full stop that's all we need to ask ourselves in terms of our mental uh, ability so let's look at the practical aspects so what are the players doing and feeling some of the players might be over eager some of the players might be subdued. Some of the players are going, thank goodness, I've got my release. This is the first time they've been able to get rid of some of that frustration, that emotion, whether it's through work, whether it's through home life. What are the risks of people doing this? Like I said, we might get more dissent. You might get people being slightly out of character. You might be having that bit of rust. Um, where they're going to have that poor touch and they need to overcompensate it with a lunging challenge. And we need to be ready. We've got to have this awareness that players, club officials as well, club assistant referees, they might not be as ready as we're going to be. And we've just got to get ready for these little telltale signs that are going to help us manage that game of football that Chris talked about earlier. We've also got the COVID guidelines, so we need the practicality of that. Um, you know, how we how people are going to be paid, our changing room is going to be open, our shower is going to be available. We need to be ready for that. You know, there's no point going shirt and tie somewhere and you've, you've literally got half a tree to cover your modesty and uh, and get changed. So do your homework and, uh, and, and let's get ready for the the COVID guidance that we also need to undertake. How do we make sure players are, are safe again? How are we keeping ourselves safe as well with the guidance available? Competition rules, Abbo uh, touched on it earlier. There's going to be some circular uh, from CAMS FA, which is fantastic. But we need to make sure that we know what's going on. Are there penalty shootouts? Is it a cup game? Is it a league game? Don't assume. Uh, sorry, just a quick one on competition rules. I've also seen some competitions have actually passed uh, legislation that they're now on rolling roll-off subs if they weren't before, um, just to make it easier for um, COVID as well as um, there's going to be players that are going to be uh, probably blowing a gasket after about three minutes. So they need the ability to be able to 
rotate substitutions. And the only way you're going to know that is by looking at the competition rules and engaging with the competitions that you're representing. Game details, venue, timings, who's playing. Again, we've got to get the teams ready for this as well. Are we getting confirmations in good time? They've probably forgotten they need to do some of this stuff. But more importantly, are we going to get to the right place at the right time? Are you ready for that? Our tolerance. I'm not going to tell you to not recognise yellow card challenges. I am not going to tell you that dissent needs to be ignored because everyone's had a crap few months. We need to manage a game of football. We need to live up to our expectations. So your personal expectations, Sam's expectations at CAMS FA, Phil Hill's expectations of everyone that represents the badge that he proudly um, leads. Chris Abbott as a, as a, a competition um, administrator, he knows that all the clubs have an expectation of our referees. So we still need to go out there and manage a game of football and we need to consider what our tolerance levels are going to be. If you give too much, you'll lose that control. If we rein it in too much, we might not have the game of football that everyone turned up to enjoy to do and it causes problems. So let's be aware and let's get our game management utterly, utterly precise. Um, the gaffer, Chris Knowles, said about kit and supplies. Again, uh, wrote this down. Um, <laughs> will you actually fit in your kit? Wear your socks. Um, are your boots clean? Were they last used in October? If we're ready, we're going to make sure that we've got all our, decks, uh, all our ducks in order and we've got everything that could potentially uh, trip us up. But it's such an easy thing that we can control and influence. Where, are, where is everything? Where is that kit bag? So make sure you've got everything in place. Do you need to quickly order something off A&H or through the other channels available? And then finally, and then you're going to um, miss my voice for a bit because I'm going to get you guys to do some more interactive work on this. So personally, again, let's have a bit of a reflection. And I shared with you, I've struggled this year. I think, I think quite a lot of people around us have if it's not you. So what's going on with us emotionally? Are we actually emotionally ready to take on a game of football? Are we able to have that emotional resilience? Um, do we have that emotional intelligence to be able to switch off for 90 minutes, go out with a smile and referee a game of football? Or are we actually at risk that our emotions are going to come into a game of football? You've also got to think about the players as well. What are their emotional attachments to it as well? There's some people that are still very much in fear of, um, of restart. And again, we need to be aware of that and be very mindful. But thinking about are we ready? Are we ready emotionally to take on the challenges that a game of football uh, presents? Our appearance. Now, you can't have a haircut. Uh, Boris said no until the 12th of uh, the 12th of April, unless you've got shears at home. But in terms of our appearance, have we got everything cleaned? Have we got everything in order? Um, are we ready for that first appearance when they come out? And you, um, I think uh, Richard Nichols uh, stated about if this is your first game of the season, you want to go out there, first impressions, great to see everyone again, really looking forward to it. Bang, let's go out and do our job. So are we appearing confident as well as smart, athletic, professional and everything that everyone expects? Are we ready? Uh, what's going on at work? What's going on with our home life? Um, what impacts do these have on our game? What impacts do they have on our, re our preparation? Is the wife going, oh, God, that's it. I've lost you on Saturdays again or Sunday mornings. It might be. She can't wait to get you out of the house. Um, but that's enough about Abbo. Um, but in terms of work and home, what impact does that have, not only on match days, but also our preparation to make sure we're ready? Are we able to dedicate a bit of time just to have a look at some clips or uh, reflect on the laws of the game, go out for that run, uh, be able to pick up a phone call, etc., and do our correspondence? So, again... We've just got to bring this back into what has become a normal life again. 
COVID attitudes, I've already mentioned there. So, you know, what, what's our attitude towards COVID? Are we still social distancing? Are we still wearing the masks that are required? Um, and we've still got to be mindful um, that there are requirements and there are still um, expectations around this. You know, even if you're very lucky enough to have had a vaccine, let's not drop our guard. We still need to make sure that football returns safely and that we still have the attitude to promote a, a safe environment when it comes to COVID as well. And I want all of you to protect yourselves as well. Having had COVID, it's horrific. I never want anyone to go through that. It's not pleasant. Um, so let's make sure we're on our guards there as well. So enough about me. I've gone through four different areas. So we've looked at the physical preparation. We've looked at the mental preparation. Looked at the practical preparation as well as um, us personally. So, Sam, James. Oh, I'm just making sure he's still awake. Good. <laughs> um, so Sam is going to put everyone back into breakout rooms. And what I would like is for you guys to now look at a bit of an action plan. So we covered off so many different things over them four headings. So what are you thinking? Do you know what? That's a really good point. I need to make sure I'm doing this, whether it's physical, whether it's something you need to do privately, mentally. Is it something practically like where's my kit bag, etc.? Let's draw up an action plan of three to five things that we need to do individually. This is not a group, but I want you to discuss it in your groups to get ideas. And also let's look at some of them things and think, well, how can I overcome this? And let's have an action plan so we're all ready for our first games. Sam. OK, uh, I will drop you all back into the breakout rooms. Uh, the majority are the same. Um, I've just evened some of the numbers out um, on them. So there should be eight or nine now in each group. Ten more minutes, James. That would be lovely. Perfect. So I'll drop a two minute warning in like I did last time. Uh, same uh, facilitators as last time as well. Uh, let's press that button and get them going. So let's think about the action plan. What do we need to do to be ready for the return to football either this weekend or the 10th or 11th of April? Lovely, thank you. One more group getting ready and then everyone that is, there we go, everyone left is in this room. Okay, good stuff. I take it I'm staying here, am I? Uh, if you wish to. Unless you yeah. Want to the group. yeah, no, no, all good, all good. All right, okay, this is going to be a long 10 minutes unless we get anyone. So, Dave, need to wear in your new boots. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Get some old Vaseline on the inside of them. But, yeah, maybe uh, the ground's still quite soft out there. So get over to the park, wear them in. You don't want first day blisters. Any other thoughts? You need to think about what's going to happen on the day. And I think map out your day. Map when yeah. you, as, you, as you've already mentioned, yes, where where is the game? What time is kickoff? OK, how long is it going to take to get me there and, and map out your day from there? What do I need to make sure that I've got with me? OK, I'm going change, but don't forget your whistle. Don't forget all your other attributes that you've got to take with you uh, and just get things sort of set in your head. Even write them down if necessary. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's almost going back to basics, isn't it, Andy? Like being the new kid at school again and just let's restart. Let's get everything in the, in, in the thing. So, um Okay, good stuff. Right, um, who else is there? Any other ideas, John? Um, what about remind yourselves of like things that just recently come in, like the um, sin bin rules, because they, you know, they they do happen, and you have to sit there, you stand there, and think, yeah, that was that. That's the reason reason why we we do this like that, and it's like you know, two sin bins mean red and then you you, you, you want you want to be just re remind yourself of what what the protocol is ready for it do you know what that's a solid thought because i'll be brutally honest um 
I struggled to get my head around sim bins when they first came out. So let alone have it off and, uh, uh, and, and, and not be inactive. That's, that's a really good point. Uh, I, so it's not I, just I, the competition I, rules and the, and law, but also the sim bin. I, yeah, I was going to mention take the sim the bins actual as sim bin well. rules out with me. So that um, if, if, um, if, if you get that mental blank, you just go, hold on, let me mm. just have a look at this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I think someone was just jumping in about some bins as well. Yeah, sorry, it was me. I'm actually on as Nick because I've been having technical issues. It's Claire. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. right. Um, yeah, now I was going to say about sim bins as well because um, actually mentioning it to the clubs and the players if you're going to use it because I know it's a relatively new rule that's just come in, but if you're going to use it, tell the players you're using it so they're not too shocked if they do get sent off as we've um as has happened in the past mm, mm. So yeah well, like, obviously like, sim bins are yeah sim bins are a very important part of the game um and it's not a case of whether well, we're going to be using it or not using it if it's uh, a requirement because that's that's football mm. then you know we need to be ready to use them but also it's getting the it's getting the clubs reminded and uh, ready again as well so um really good point there steph thank you okay uh who went we heard from i would like to pick on jack or matthew or gavin anyone No. Okay, that didn't go too well. Uh, what else are we thinking then? Is there anything else we need to do? So Dave said about doing the YouTube idea. I know. What? Such a sad oh. Crack open a bottle of Radox on a Saturday morning, lay in the bath looking at YouTube uh, for red card offences. And it, it was dark, but it worked for me. Um, it, it certainly worked for me. That was good. I think it's just a matter of preparation as well. So, like, as it was mentioned earlier on, um, checking to make sure that you do know where the ground is, if it has been changed. Yeah. Just yeah, and, it, and it's that old saying, isn't it? Um, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Mm. It's um, it's making sure. And, and there's such an impact, uh, and it's going to be a bit of a logistical challenge to a lot of competitions, and clubs, you know, those that might be at a school, but the school might be shut down for anybody else but students. Um, parks, will they have people working that can open the change of rooms? Will they open the change of rooms? Loads and loads of um, loads of different things going on, and so much to consider. And that's the idea of this session: is just to kind of break it all down identify what our risks are to make sure we're ready and let's move on from that uh, Jack I know you said you've got some technical problems not a problem mate um, if you want to put some ideas in in a chat that would be great uh, just, just so we can see what you're thinking about yeah sorry just remind yourself about what you're going to say before the game to your assistants if you've got assistants oh, goodness, yeah. Um, yeah. because it's a long time since we've given that talk and also to the captains and possibly the management setting out how you intend to manage the game prior to the game so there are no surprises yeah andy absolutely um i mean i've said it so many times over what 26 years that my my sister referee talk will probably just fall out of me but it'll probably be all over the place so you know think about how or what you need from them and also think about how much you want to go through with them as well, because um, they haven't done the job for four months or five months. So are they as ready as we are? Arguably not some of them, but it's still important that they're there as well. So, um, but yeah, with the, with the captains as well, we need to be promoting, helping make the football today, guys um, and ladies. I'm not being sexist, but you know, great to be back let's not have this opportunity taken away from us and let's not walk away 
thinking that was horrible. So if people do get a little bit agitated or someone's being a little bit late in their challenges and stuff, just help me manage it through and everyone's going to have a great morning or a great afternoon. Uh, Dave said about uh, thinking about having drink breaks, not just because of the weather. Yeah, absolutely. I think there was some guidance that came down initially because obviously they can't share water bottles, etc. Um, but yeah, they probably appreciate the breather, some of them. You might even appreciate the breather as well. So um, again, it's about managing it right from the beginning. What do the clubs want? What are their expectations? What What can we do? To help them enjoy a game of football even more, and if that's something we need to factor in, let's 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 honour it. Let's not be officious. Uh, Jack, you're just saying that pre pre match is something I could personally work on. Um, yeah, absolutely. Even over all the years, there's still things I tweak, or there's I've given instructions to to assistant referees, and they're not being great. Uh, not just the assistant referees, but that's enough about Ando. Um, but actually getting out there and and talking things through and 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 laying down what you need from them during that game is is crucially important. Just um, sorry, guys. Just picking up on what you said about helping clubs. Is there anything mm. you can do before the game? Can you can you, you know, obviously exchange of emails, checking as you say the venue and that sort of thing. But things like um club colours you know th these teams haven't as you say haven't been out there for a few months just remind them of those kind of things um yeah and then again kind of back to your mental state um the first game i did after the last lockdown there were there was a foul every two minutes so you know 38 40 fouls in the whole game which was quite a lot so it's just thinking about those type of things yeah yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, yeah, great thing about the kits. Um, something I did for many years was just make sure there wasn't a, uh, a kit clash. Have they actually got a blood shirt? Have they got a couple of goalkeeper tops? Have they remembered the bibs full of subs? All these daft things is where we've got to prepare for ourselves. The clubs have got to do the same as well. So good point, Gav. Yeah, thanks, Ando. Thanks for calling me James. I still find that weird. I know you find it weird, which is why I keep doing it. Professionally. <laughs> you say that, Nolsey went straight in with a big, big slim right at the beginning of his intro, so. Just have it. Sorry. The professionalism, <laughs> the professionalism went, went out of my body. I had an out of body experience, so I do apologise. That's, that's bad. That's bad. I need detention. <laughs> Right, okay. And uh, let me know when everyone's back, please, buddy. Yeah, we've got one group back with us. Uh, three more, uh, two more, one more. Always seems to be uh, Mr. Leach's group. That is the last one to come back, but that's. We're already here. Oh, you're here. Ah, there we go. Sorry, Mr. Leach, for dropping you in it, and uh, no, even worse for me being caught. Uh, James, we're all here. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Right, um, I'm just going to open this up then, just a very quick, if somebody could just share with us one thing that they're going to look out for, particularly to help them making sure they are ready for the restart. If you could do that tonight, that'd be great. I've got work in the morning. I'll, I'll go and James. <laughs> I've also had obviously not just a kit check, but tra checking your transport if you've not been using your car so much, because obviously you've been working from home. Really, really important for the first time you go out to be the referee. Yeah, no, good stuff. Thank you, Albo. Anybody else? What? What? Uh, this is yeah, this is Richard. This is rich and the priority, I think a priority for any referee, I know we've talked about it, is your, is your allocated match details. When you receive your appointment from Chrissy on a Monday uh, and you're going out the following Saturday, what do you need to do between receiving those match details and making sure that you arrive at the ground at the right time, you know what the facility, what facilities are available to you, etc. Yeah, great stuff, Richard. And, and again, uh, Gavin in the group, we were just talking about right at the end when everyone started coming back in, was don't forget the clubs. 
um, are getting ready as well. You know, do they know where all their kit is? Do they have, um, you know, when you have that confirmation of the game, um, have they have they made sure there's not going to be a kit clash? Um, have they got um, a spare shirt for a blood injury? Do they have a couple of goalkeeper tops? That kind of stuff. So one thing we were just talking about in our group was how can we help the clubs as well? Because I still think a massive part of our role as a referee is not necessarily going around going, well, that's a foul, that's not a foul. You can have that throw and you can't. Our, our role as an ambassador of football has got to be to help our clubs. It's got to be to how can we help them and the players have an even more enjoyable experience in the game of football? So does that mean we, we go up? Um, I think Dave in our group said about, you know, about drinks breaks because clearly not just because of weather, but they're not allowed to share water bottles. So actually, do we just have a quick two minute breather after 25 minutes and let everyone recap? Um, they'll probably appreciate it. You might appreciate it as well. So when we get to the ground, let's talk to them. You know, what, what challenges have they got? What can we do to assist them? And let's help them get an even more enjoyable game of football as well. So, Richard, thank you uh, for that. Something I mentioned, James, just to add one in there, just a quick one in. There's been a lot of changes in road layouts and things, especially in Cambridge over the, uh, the last 12 months. So maybe just make sure that you know what route you're going to be taking to get to the ground. There's a lot of roadworks and bits and pieces going on at the moment. There's nothing worse getting caught and not knowing where you're meant to be going. And that was Matt Leach presenting the traffic forecast for Cambridgeshire. He'll be back in 20 minutes with your update. Um, no, good. Thanks, Matt. Um, but again, it's that preparation, knowing where these grounds are. What you know, don't assume that um, they're going to be playing at the same venue. You know, we were talking about in our group about if schools are um, closed to outside uh, visitors, etc., because they're trying to keep them uh, clean. And these clubs play at a school, they might have had to go to a different venue. Um, so plotting how you're going to get there, what amount of time you need to get there dare i say it with the restrictions uh, being lifted there's going to be even more traffic on the roads again with people being able to travel around and, and and go and see family friends that they haven't done for so so long as well so all these factors um are really going to help us get ready um i'll take one more point and then i'll start wrapping up for the evening if that's okay nosey anything in your group Uh, basically got them just to work on their uh, on their action plan so nothing was uh, specifically covered uh, my approach on this is that their action plans are individual um, offered out if there was any questions any burning desires but uh, they were quite happy writing away it's quite good seeing the cameras actually on uh, on sort of top of everybody's heads as they were looking down <laughs> writing away so nothing specific in our group but I have no doubt that, um, that their action plans are tipped up, ready to go. Fantastic. Cheers, mate. Um, so just going back to the presentation then. So right at the beginning, and uh, I wasn't sure how long this would last, so an hour quarter I'm really, really chuffed with, which means I've, I've talked far too long, or actually you guys have uh, managed to take quite a bit away from this evening. So my question to you right at the beginning was, are you ready? Are you ready physically? Are you ready mentally, practically, and also personally? That's what we've covered off this evening. And what do we need to consider to ensure we are ready for the restart? So we've all got action plans to take away. Hopefully you've taken some thoughts around all that. Do you need to work on your physicalness? Do you need to work on the mental side or practically? And are we getting ourselves into that form that Richard mentioned earlier on uh, this evening. Um, what do we actually need, um, not only for consideration, but what support do you need? And also what's available? And I'm sure Sam will cover off anything and, and also Abo from uh, a competition's point of view, um, what support is available to you guys from Cambridgeshire? And I know there's gonna be some tremendous support 
uh, available locally um, as well. And then you've got some great people that have joined our call uh, this evening, uh, Richard Nichols, uh, Matt Leach, and other developers within the county as well. So think about what the supports are, but also think about what are the risks to you? And I'm not just talking about COVID, um, but what are the risks to you in terms of your preparation? What do you need to be really ready for? Um, what do you need to consider? Is there that um, that poor touch by a player that's going to turn into a lunging challenge? Is there going to be someone that really doesn't want to be there and they're, they're, they're going to take their frustration out on you? Um, what risks have you got personally in your physical, mental, practical and your personal readiness as well? At the end of the day, everyone is eager and keen to be back. We are as referees. Players will be, club officials will be, if they ever get their return. Spectators will be as well. Everyone wants to get back to a normal world. But above all, we have to be ready. Um, my thanks to um, uh, Sam again for the invite this evening. Uh, my thanks to you guys uh, as well um, for your participation and interaction. And uh, I do wish you all well. Um, in terms of returning to the field of play, but also wish you well um, as we get back to a normal world, whatever that may look like in the future. And really looking to everyone face to face again at an event, and hope we can bring some Norwegians along too at some point. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, James. Um, a great insight there into sort of um, both how your mind works and preparing for the restart of football. Uh, has anyone got any questions for James based on um, what he's covered tonight or anything in general about James's refereeing career um, or his role uh, as part of CORE? Sorry, did I have a career? Uh, I off camera's inverted commas. Okay. Um, <laughs> If you've got questions, either drop them in the chat, raise your hands or unmute your mic and just fire them at us. I just realised this camera angle does do no justice for the size of my forehead. Yeah, that's a bad angle for you. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> okay, I'm glad Craig's gone off for a run now. So that's him. <laughs> Get it before the temperatures change to 21 degrees. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I will uh, circulate. So we prepared some fitness sessions for our call group. Um, I will get them circulated uh, in the next newsletter that will come out uh, early next week um, as well uh, after Easter. I suppose next week in preparation for the return to football. Um, if James hasn't, if there's no questions for James, um, I will share my screen and just run through uh, a couple of things um, before we Sorry. wrap up. This evening. Oh, we have got a question. Sorry. Ooh, yeah, I was just I just wanted to qualify what I said about the fitness sessions. More like are the people who want to meet up and do some of these sessions? Because like my motivation to shift my ass outside individually is not great at times. Um but yeah, if 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 there's a group of people that wanted to just say, look, you know, if the next four weeks let's start working through some of those core programmes or whatever, that would be awesome from my point and also gives a chance to chat about games and wind down and wind up and all the rest. Fantastic. If anyone is interested in meeting up and, and doing fitness sessions, drop me an email um, and I'll put everyone that comes in um, in touch with each other. Um, and we can take it from there. Uh, depending on the numbers, I'll either put everyone together or I'll try and regionalise it depending on, on how much we get. Um, I'll also include some information on that in the newsletter as well to try and get some more people interested. Thank you for that, Kerry. Perfect. So. Um, just to uh, really highlight what else we've got going on this week um, for your enjoyment um, and, and experience. So tomorrow evening, seven o'clock, we're joined by uh, Gemma White and Christiana Hattersley, um, who are going to open up and sort of discuss the opportunities available within football, uh, both from a men's pathway and female pathway uh, and the opportunities available from there. Uh, Christiana is a Women's Super League referee as well, so she'll talk about her experiences um, and answer any questions that anyone has got. There'll be a fairly open Q&A session uh, with Gemma and Christiana as well. On Wednesday, we'll be joined by uh, Dan Meeson, who's going to deliver a session around denial of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, or DOGSO. Um, 
again that will be a, a really um, engaging session uh, Dan's one of these that will um, pick out people and will a, um, get you all to discuss and engage as much as possible Thursday Alan Dale will work with you around effective communication leading into Friday's session with Fry around dealing with difficult parents players and managers um, which will be uh, fantastic for, for everyone in here and particularly coming into the restart when players might be a little bit more temperamental compared to their usual selves. Could give you some key skills there to, to enable how to react with them. If you are concerned about returning uh, to football following COVID, uh, drop um, a, a completion into the form at bit.ly uh, bit slash ref concerns. Um, and, and we'll get in touch with you and discuss those concerns and work out ways of how we can work around those um, and offer you more support and guidance where necessary. Um, finally, though, uh, just like to wrap up a massive thanks to James for taking time out of his busy schedule um, tonight to open up a, a full week of, of learning and, and development for us all. Um, hopefully you all found that really informative and engaging and got your brain working ahead of the restart to football, whether that be this weekend, if you're fortunate enough to pick up a friendly um, or one of the few competitive fixtures there are, um, say friendly, there's no such thing as a friendly in this day and age, um, or whether you're preparing for the 10th and 11th restart as well. Also, big thank you to Chris Knowles, Matt Leach and Tom Kelly and Chris for uh, facilitating those breakout rooms. Uh, but also thank you all for joining on tonight's session. Um, I know it's the first night of good weather, or shall I say uh, summer, which will soon go by Wednesday. Um, I'm sure many of you have had the barbecues out tonight. We're quickly putting them away. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules um, to engage with what we're trying to offer. Hopefully I will see as many of you as possible um, on the upcoming sessions later this week. If anyone wants to have any uh, questions that they didn't want to ask as a big group. Me and James will be sticking around for, for a couple of moments. I'm sure Chris, uh, both Chris's, Abbo and Knowles will hang around as well. Um, and I'm sure Phil Hill will will hang around as well in case there's any burning questions for, for Phil as well. Um, that is all for tonight. Um, if there is anything else, drop us an email. Uh, any questions, drop me an email. But thank you all for joining and have a good evening. Enjoy the weather tomorrow.